Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're going to have a vicious head-to-head -head bout where I'm going to make a wooden modular tool holder. It's a new design of my own. I think a lot of people are going to like it. It's pretty cool. And of course, I will give the free cut sheet at the end for both Imperial and Metric, so you can follow along and build your own if you'd like. And then I'm also designing my own custom 3D printed drill holder that's expandable and modular too. I, of course, will give that file away for free to you. So if you have a 3D printer, you can just hit print and boom, you magically have tool holder. It's very nice. But I do have one more surprise for this video. And that's Anchor Make reached out to me and said, Justin, would you like to do a giveaway during this video? And I said, absolutely. The people who watch my video like free stuff. I know you do, you're nodding. Uh, and so they said, hey, let's give away one of our Anchor Make M5C 3D printers today. So. Yes. Uh, later in the video, I will tell you exactly how to enter to win one of these, and in a week, I will select the lucky winner. But in the meantime, let's get to the head-to-head -head bout today on Bittner Bill. In this head-to-head -head versus showdown, for my wooden tool holder, I want something that is adjustable. And so, uh, this old one that I have here doesn't work for me anymore. We're going to replace it with a new adjustable system, where we take a top plate, and we use something called a keyhole router bit. The keyhole router bit makes a T groove inside the wood. Basically, a T track built into it. Now these router bits are really cheap, 10 bucks for a pack of them on Amazon, so that's really the only specialty-ish thing that you're gonna need for this build. Uh, everything else is just wood, for the most part. Now, when we make this T in the wood, I'm gonna do it every inch, all across the top here. And my dividers, I'll run them through the table saw just to put a groove on both sides to make a T as well. So I can just slide it right in. It'll be able to hold my tool. I buy a new tool that's bigger. I can slide it out and move it over one slot. Now I have a bigger hole for my tool. For our 3D printed version, I need to deal with the constraints of the size of the machine. We have to be able to build it inside this volume. And so building a holder this big isn't going to work. So I broke it down into individual bays. So when we print this, uh, it can be a standalone, just one tool holder, or I have it designed where we can link many of them together to form a larger unit, as many as you'd like. Um, also, I need the ability to adjust the opening for the handle of the tool. Some tools are very large at the top, some tools are very small, and so you need to adjust that lip that it sits on so that it adequately holds it. So uh, those were my criteria for this, but I don't know how to 3D design it. I have this idea in my head and I can draw it out on paper, but the actual getting it from paper to this machine was a hiccup for me. So I actually went and found a freelancer. There's tons of them out there, and he only charged me $20 after I gave him my measurements and my drawing, and he perfectly made a 3D version for me. So if you've ever thought about 3D printing and you kind of stayed off of it because you're like, I don't know how to do that other stuff, if you get something really cool in your mind, somebody for a pretty affordable price can take it and turn it into a 3D model for you. We are setting up our 1 4th by 3 8 keyhole bit to a height of 3 8 inch. I set my fence to two inches off of the router bit. Every time I make a pass through, I'm going to move my fence back one inch. For my 3D tool holder design, I went with something simple. The walls themselves are pretty thick so that it's rigid. Uh, it has three holes on the left that correspond to the hooks on the right. That way if you print multiples of these, they will interlock and you can keep extending it like one consecutive unit. Uh, the hooks do not really interfere with the other tools that uh, go into the holder next to it. They're pretty low profile. They look a little chunky in here, but uh, most of that's hidden in the wall. Uh, there are four screw holes in the back for mounting it to the wall. And then I have this half arrow. So it's most of an arrow right here. And what this is for is to control how big the opening is right here. There are additional pieces to this, which is either the skinny piece or the wide piece. And so it's this long tube, which has this half arrow shape to it. And so it will slide onto 
uh, this and thus make this skinnier based on how big your tool is. Uh, the half arrow shape prevents it from coming off other than pulling it straight out. And since we're designing it to where it's very low tolerances, uh, once you get it on, it doesn't really want to come off that easily. So uh, you don't have to worry about this slipping off all the time. Back over with our wood project, there is a ton of tear out from all those keyhole slots. I've used this bit before and I know that this tends to happen. So the wood that I did this on is larger than what I needed so that I could then trim it down on both sides, getting rid of the tear out to our final width of 5.5 inches. Setting up the table saw to make these grooves, I have positioned it 7 seconds away from the blade at a height of 5 30 seconds. I'm now gonna run each piece through, flip it over, run it through again. Now setting up the blade to 5 16 and I'm gonna run each piece one more time. Inside the Anchor Make software, we're gonna go ahead and get our model ready to print. And the settings that I have used are fast and 20% infill with global supports checked on because we have these uh, overhanging hooks so they need to be supported as they're being printed otherwise they will fail. So I'm going to hit preview and here we go. We are looking at 8 hours 17 minutes for this print. The Anchor Make M5C is a very fast printer, but this is a huge print. As you can see this cube right here, it's almost the entire height of the volume. I would say it's maybe a fourth of uh, the entire print volume that you could possibly do. So it's definitely not a little print. Let's go ahead and get it started. For our dividers to make a more quality glue up, we're going to route a pocket right here. Uh, what we need to do is set the table saw to one inch and we're setting the height of this to 5 sixteenths. I'm going to run it through once, I'm going to spin it around, run it through again, and then it will give me my groove that I need to cut out. I can either use a chisel or I can continue to run through to get rid of the remainder. I've installed a roundover bit into the table and I'm gonna route every single side of the bottom plates. That way I'm not causing any damage to the tools or cutting up my hands on a sharp edge. All right, so this modular holder is done. You can see this is three slots, this is four, this is three, this is four. So, uh, you know, I was able to adjust it based on what the tool needed, but I do have to come clean that I had to cut two of these bottom plates in order to make these tools fit. Um, so that is a negative in that zone. Um, but, you know, one way that I could have accounted for that is change the spacing on the keyholes up above. But at an inch spacing, we have a decent amount of wood in between each one. If we went to three quarters of an inch or half an inch, uh, we would have had barely any wood left and it makes it a weaker structure. So um, I'm not sure if that works either. So uh, this is a head-to-head -head competition. Think of this as what you will. Let's now check out the 3D printed version and see how it came out. Me again, so when I was editing this video and I have to get it out tonight so I can't spend the time to redo it, um, I came up with a better option for this too that deals with my issue. And that is to make the bottom plate also with a keyhole router bit. So rather than routing it out uh, like a groove or a dado um, and gluing it in there, why don't we make this adjustable too? So. Uh, this will accommodate for the fact that sometimes the spacing won't work. You can make different width bottom plates, slide them on, and then if this one doesn't work for the next tool that you have, uh, as you switch things around, you can just slide it off and slide a new one on. That way you're only replacing one small piece of wood instead of redoing the whole structure every time. All right, my trusty Anchor Make M5C has printed out three of my holders. 
Uh, I left this one exactly as it comes out of the printer right now with all the supports on it. You need to print it with supports because we have these big overhanging hooks on the side. So make sure you click that add support button when you print these. So let's go ahead, we'll remove these. They come off that easy. There we go, that side's good. The other side is for the holes, so I typically rip these off. And then I have the holes I just poke my finger through. And now it's all off. The tolerances on this are very good, and so when I put them together, they don't wanna come apart anymore. Which is awesome because you don't want them rattling around when they're up on your wall. If uh, we wanted to try out a couple different things, we got a stubby. He's pretty big. He fits in there, no problem. 12 volt little guy, no problem. Then you get stuff like this cutoff tool. Obviously, it's too big, but you know what? Most things, the battery compartment holder will take this. So most things that are even bigger will be able to hang upside down. Something like this jig. Hmm. Uh, wishful thinking, but hey, uh, most of our major hand tools like this are going to be able to go inside. So now we need to take a look at our inserts. So uh, I have three insert files that are available for download with this for free. All this is free. Um, but I primarily think you're gonna stick to either the small or the large, or none at all. So even when you don't have one in, you can see it still works fine. But, you know, I wanted to make this as adjustable as possible. So uh, what I can do is take one of these and orient it with the arrow. Also, tight tolerances. Might need to tap that guy down. In any case, once it's in there, it's not coming out. I wanted it to be that way because if you're taking it out and the little adjustment guy comes out every time, that's not gonna be any good, is it? So, perfect. All right. I'm never gonna get it back off again. But now I put my small insert in, even my stubby goes in there. The stubby is actually really snug right there, which is nice. Something, this guy's smaller, not too bad. If I use the larger one over here, I'm not going to put it all the way in because I want to be able to take it out again. It's too small now for this guy to go in here. So it's going to be a lot of smaller tools that go in uh, if you have this. I think the smallest one is going to be the most used one. Uh, and so I printed a couple of those out too. We're wall mounted. You can either directly screw it or you can put it on a French cleat like I did. Uh, the French cleat is holding it no problem. I'm very happy with the overall print quality of this. It came out very nice and it's very, very stable and solid. Uh, I can put my tools in. And a bonus feature that I haven't mentioned yet is you get a shelf with the top of this. So you could easily be placing your chargers up on top. Maybe you do four or five of these, six of these wide. You can have all of your batteries stacked up on top, which, you know, I can go three deep on that. That's very good. Um, and you also have the opportunity inside the Anchor Make software if you want to, to scale this up. So let's say we wanted to put one of my big nail guns. It's not gonna fit in there. Well, I can just go in there and say, make it 200% bigger. Now, as a negative, it will print the holes in the back 200% wider. Uh, than they were in here. So you might need a washer when you're wall mounting this. But it was one click to make a much bigger version of this for my nail guns to fit in. So, um, you know, sky's the limit with these type of things. I love how easy the 3D printing software is. All right, giveaway time. So if you would like your chance at winning an AnchorMake M5C, what I need you to do is number one, live inside the United States or Canada. Unfortunately, that's where I can ship to, so I apologize to my international viewers out there. I promise I'll get you a giveaway pretty soon. Uh, number two, you need to go to my YouTube communities page. On that page, and I'll put a link to it down below, uh, I will have instructions for the other things that you have to do in order to enter this giveaway. I'd also love to hear from you about what you'd like to see in another versus video. I plan to do another one of these next month. So let me know what type of shop thing you want to see me design in 3D and also make a new design in wood. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on that one. So 
I hope you'll like and subscribe, and of course, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next video.